New directors of the Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida discuss expansion and what's to come. Big news happened this week when the Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida and the Fort Lauderdale Gay Men's Chorus announced that they would merge to become one of the world's largest LGBTQ plus music performance organizations. With the internationally renowned Christmas concert coming on December 18th at the world-class Hard Rock Live, this will be the first concert of its kind to return to South Florida since COVID-19 pandemic began in 2020. The Combined Chorus is the oldest LGBTQ performing arts organization in Florida and has more than 170 voices. Tonight, you will learn more about this special time of the year, this incredible concert, including 2022 Broadway Tony nominee Shoshana Bean, and why a gay chorus is so important for dignity, diversity, and pride. Queer News Tonight has previously announced the merger of the Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida and the original Fort Lauderdale Gay, Gay Men's Chorus. This newly merged group, which will continue under the brand of the Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida, has become one of the largest gay men's chorus groups in the entire world. The Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida is an artistic force dedicated to social change. Their membership and organization are diverse, intergenerational, and multicultural. With upcoming events like holidays at Sunshine Cathedral on December 16th, and then December 18th, celebrate the holidays with GMCSF at Hard Rock Live, yeah, he said Hard Rock Live, with Broadway's 2022 Tony Award nominee, Soshana Bean. They offer performances that are driven to open minds and change hearts. Tonight, we are excited to be joined by three members of the chorus. First is Edward Otto Zelke. He is the Director of Marketing and Sponsorship for the Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida. And prior to his position, he was the Marketing and Operations Manager, of course we all know, from the Grand Resort and Spa, bringing global branding attention to the Grand by sponsoring this little show at World of Wonder, the Emmy Award-winning RuPaul's Drag Race for six seasons. I have a little experience with that myself. I think you do. <laughs> we also have two newly elected members of the board for the course. First is Eric Eldridge. He is Senior Event and Community Leadership Professional a community leadership professional who has been working for Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood for the last 12 years, favorite hotel of mine. In addition, he has served on the board of several charitable organizations, including Diversity Honors, the Gay and Lesbian Business Exchange, and Deliver the Dream. Also joining us tonight is Johnny Mejia, and he is an experienced banker you're a banker, a banker. Uh, with a, a uh, passion for inclusion and development and a love of working in the financial services industry. He is a branch and business banking center manager and vice president of inclusion, we love that word, and development, a champion at PNC Bank, Broward, Southeast Florida. Welcome gentlemen to Queer News Tonight. Thank well, you. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Well, the news about the chorus has been super exciting. A lot of people don't realize uh, South Florida uh, has been really lucky. We have had where many communities don't have a gay chorus. Most cities have a single gay men's chorus. We have had three uh, choruses here in South Florida, in Broward and Dade County. And the big news in these, least, uh, in these last couple of weeks about the merger of Fort Lauderdale and Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida into uh, the South Florida branding. That must have been exciting news for all of you. I think it was something that, you know, as someone new to the organization, um, it was something that I had hoped that would come very soon. Um, I have a partner who's in the chorus himself, and so I was a little bit of aware of some of the politics and some of the things that were going on. Wait, politics and gay? Well, you know, that would never that <laughs> You have it anywhere, yeah, so. Right. But um, yeah, you know, and I knew that this was a moment where I thought, you know, we could really make a good impact if we start, you know, combining resources. And I think that's really uh, what it's about. And I, I think we're going to leverage each other and uh, other experiences. And I, and I think it's just going to do really well for 
the organization as a whole. Yeah, and the and the course under the branding of the Gay Men's Course of South Florida, uh, combined with the uh, the previous Fort Lauderdale Gay Men's Course years ago, there was some separation. Blah 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 and blah blah blah. But uh, the reuniting under the single branding uh, uh, makes it the the oldest LGBT musical group uh, uh, in the state of Florida, and also one of the largest choruses, uh, men's gay men's course. Uh, in the world, I, I understand like a, around 170 voices. In yeah, the I think I think the latest is about 170. Yeah, that's point. that's uh, on the quite, roster, yeah. quite amazing. And you two join your brand new board members. I was excited to be able to talk to you um, because um, it uh, it allows us to talk about why a chorus is important, a gay men's chorus is important, not only in the LGBTQ community, uh, but the community at large. It's a different way to represent pride in, in our community. Tell us a little bit about why you wanted to get involved uh, on the board. And uh, I think for me, um, there's a few reasons. I've been working with a chorus for about seven years now. Um, as a, I work with Seminole Hard Rock, we host the concert every year at Hard Rock Live. I've um, been more and more involved, obviously, with helping to plan the concert and then seeing the reach that the chorus has and the uh, the community that it offers the members and the give back, whether that's volunteer at Wicked Manors or volunteer at World AIDS Day or whatever, whatever that is, the volunteer, I just thought it was important to lend my support and help what I could do in the community. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you have banking experience. Now, I, I'm curious, do, we, do any of y'all sing? Or are you are you front of house or are you back of house? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm thinking more, you know, uh, back, of, back of house, you know, but you know, karaoke maybe, you know, give me, you know. I karaoke too, but that's not singing. <laughs> but that's not singing, that's not singing. When I was younger, I did, you know, and I think, you know, that's, you know, what kind of resonated with me. You know, I, I am a banker by trade, that's my day job. I wear my banker hat, provide financial solutions, but the other uh, part of what I do that is very important to me is reaching out to often like underserved uh, parts of the community. And, and PNC actually has supported the Gay Men's Course in South Florida for multiple years now. And that's kind of how I, um, got to learn, you know, to learn of them, and you know, just like you know, we're talking about the merger of the, you know, uh, gay men's, you know, course of South Florida uh, coming together, you know, with um, the Fort Lauderdale uh, gay men's course. To me, it's like a coming together of community. It's a coming together of voices, and I think now more than ever, it's important that we combine our voices and that uh, you know it resonates throughout the communities we serve. And much like Eric said, you know, uh, whether it be you know uh, supporting um, you know as as a donor, as a contributor, helping behind the scenes, helping with the production, uh, this is something that spoke you know it spoke to me. You you opened a door for me that uh, I want to walk through, and that's politics. <laughs> um, choruses, uh, gay men's choruses in the United States were an outcropping from the Stonewall Riots in 1969, and it was a way uh, that gay men could get together and show pride in community in a completely different way. You could pick up a, uh, a brick, you could have a pride parade, you could be in a chorus, but they were all really very similar in terms of uh, what their goals were. And uh, we're 53, 54 years now uh, post Stonewall. And in, in South Florida, we have the Miami uh, Gay Men's Chorus. And uh, now we have uh, the Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida. And you talk about the unity. It's interesting to me in 2022, with all of the politics that we have faced this year, especially in Florida, mm -hmm. uh, politically in attacks and don't say gay in our community, um, that the two principal um, uh, gay men's voices, musical voices in South Florida would say, okay, let's come together. Don't you think that that's interesting that that the timing and the representation of this yeah. year I is think, what it is? Yeah, I think it's really important to show community, to show the unity that, you know, the community can offer and, you know, it's not marginalized and it's showing face and a force out there to be reckoned with and showing a different size of the community, you know, letting people see that it's maybe not all gay pride and bringing a different group of together that comes to the concert, for example, when you see the audience at the concert, it's, you know, not a lot of an audience that would go to a gay pride or they might not be at another gay event, you know, and they're seeing the community in a, a different light. And it's funny because they do talk about and they talk about oftentimes community. I mean, the universe conspiring against us. In this case, I think the, the universe kind of, you know, spoke to us 
and 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 uh, came to us and, and and said, you know, hey, it's important for this to, to happen now. You know, I would have loved, say, at, at a young age, to be sitting in an audience and see a group of diverse. Uh, men, intergenerational men, Hispanics, you know, African American, um, just this representation and to have a voice. I mean, I'm a small, my name is Johnny Mejia, but my middle name is Johnny Ray, raised in the South, you know, I think having a voice. So as much progress as we, as we have made as a community, you know, you know, there's always that underlying threat and just, you know, and it, it's more vocal than ever. And I think there, you know, in my opinion, there's nothing more powerful than, than voices coming together to speak to us in a very human way you and know, to connect in a very human that way. Is, that is so crystal clear to me. And you open a door that uh, is always fundamental for me in terms of inclusion and diversity, including our own community. Sometimes at Wilton Drive, we have some problems with diversity in our own community. Um, you talk about uh, what your reaction to the course would be if you were a young man in seeing that. Um, course is uh, broached out of the 1970s, started mm -hmm. and 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 started to become representation as a pride organization, a, a men's chorus. Um, uh, I am not a face that represents the youth of the LGBTQ community, so this is a great opportunity for me to ask about what the plans are for the chorus in terms of what the next 50 years are going to be. We've crossed that 50-year threshold. Uh, we want to make our community and a, and a choral group of, of men and, and the diversity of that uh, more inclusive in our community. Well, where are we in terms of younger faces, younger voices? How do we reach out in the community we're definitely um, taking it to the next level um, when we're reaching out to different diverse communities we've just uh, introduced our first uh, female into the chorus um, and uh, also before that we had our first transgender um, enter into the chorus too so we're becoming diverse you know as as more of a, an acceptance of all uh, people that could you know sing the, the the parts of tenor and bass so as long as you can sing those uh those type of uh voice parts then you know you you can possibly be a part of the chorus you, know, mm -hmm. you have to pass the audition and stuff but you know we look within our own community and now, then we start you know tapping into the younger um people that are joining we're always looking for um different ways to you know find them we're, we're also looking at developing events around the youth. Um, we're, we're possibly looking at having some sort of a tea dance. So that might attract, you know, the younger generation getting I also, who we are. Edward, I also read that uh, the chorus is interested in the development of a youth program. Yeah. Uh, I don't know much about it, but tell me a little bit about what's going yeah, on there. Yeah, so uh, we're looking to develop the Youth Pride Chorus here in South Florida. Um, it's something that we're, uh, we've been uh, had a little bit of a challenge trying to to start up. Um, obviously, with all of what's going on in our state, um, you know, I think it's kind of uh, we we've had to kind of change our thinking and our and our approach about it. So we've hired um, two young men um, that are spearheading this for us, and um, they're a welcome addition to um, you know as as a you know. To, is it public and community? Is it going to schools? What? How does it work? So um, that's what we're trying. That's where on the the ground level mm -hmm. trying to figure out. Right now, you know, we've been trying to reach into the school systems. Um, haven't had much luck. We've tried to reach out, you know, to uh, the community, you know, through social media, through the uh, press. Um, I just think we just have to keep pursuing, you know, it in different forms at this point. You know, 2022 is a tough year to uh, <laughs> to try to do that. And, and I, I, I have to wink and nod uh, to the chorus. Uh, you have lots of messaging of we sing gay. <laughs> it's very clear what you're what you're saying uh, yeah. there. So it's uh, an issue where you continue to fight the fight. When well, singing is a protest in, in a way. You know, I mean, that's what we what we're using our voices for. You know, we're delivering a message and whatever that message is at the current time, then that's what we want to deliver. Yeah. So, you know, take on uh, the We Sing Gay for our season, you know, we touch a little bit on each of the concerts, you know, the elements of what we feel that means to us. Yeah. And and to that point, I have, I have to come back to June and June Pride Month. Um, Hotspots, uh, Happening Out Television puts on Stonewall Pride. Um, uh, came to uh, the Stonewall concert that you did. Uh, two acts, that first act was clearly 
uh, we are about musical protest. It was so moving um, of how all of, uh, of uh, these men come together and memorialize uh, the gay movement in America. It was just It was a such a real great protest. concert because, you know, the, the, the focus itself was, um, you know, people that you may not have heard about in the LGBTQ plus community um, and, and celebrating them for what they brought to the table for us that came, you know, before the Stonewall Riots, before any of that. So it, it was a good history lesson. It was an amazing concert. And speaking of amazing concerts, let's talk about Christmas. Yeah. Um, biggest concert of the year. Uh, you're going to do um, Friday, December 16th at Sunshine Cathedral, as everyone knows. Um, happening on Television Network, Hotspots is television studio is here on the campus at Sunshine Cathedral. Uh, you'll be uh, you'll be broadcasting or you'll be uh, well broadcast also because we're going to record. Uh, but you're going to do a Friday night uh, at Sunshine, and then Sunday you're going to be in Hard Rock Live. Now I you work at at Hard Rock. Tell us a little bit about how that partnership uh, developed. Well, this will be our seventh concert or sixth concert. Six. Six. Time flies. I can't keep up. Um, you know, we met with. Um, the chorus six seven years ago we skipped COVID, obviously um and it was just instant it just made sense you know hard rock is a music brand the chorus puts on unbelievable concerts and the production value and it just it just fell into place you know hard rock live is a perfect venue um one of the newest most technology advanced venues in the country right now um the chorus gets to put on an amazing production um we have a great broadway um, so it's Sean Bean performing this year. So it's just a great way to celebrate the holidays. Just nominated for, uh, uh, she was nominated for a Tony uh, this, uh, this season and just nominated for a Grammy. So uh, she's going to be incorporated into the concert. Um, tell me a bit about um, the Hard Rock. It must be, um, it must be overwhelming for um, n not really technically a professional music organization. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a volunteer a gay men's course. To be in a venue like the Hard Rock Live, what, describe what that experience uh, Well, like. I mean, I can tell you from the Hard Rock side is the chorus gets the same production that any other concert does. Whether that's Billy Joel that's coming or Bruce Springsteen, the gay men's chorus gets the same production team, the same lighting team, so the production value is, is you know, top of the line. I was just there for uh, the, um, the the Latin Music Awards. Mm -hmm. I forgot the name of the event, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a spectacular venue. It it's is. state of the art, and 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 uh, Hard Rock uh, is just the Seminole Hard Rock is just oh. an amazing facility, and it's breathtaking to me, even in this conversation, to say uh, Billy Joel and the Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida <laughs> in the same mm -hmm. sentence in the yeah. same venue. That's yes. really really quite incredible for around the country. There's I understand uh, Gala is is an organization of courses all over the world. There are about 200 yeah. courses like Gay Men's uh, Course of South Florida. It, I can't imagine very many courses saying, oh yeah, our, our concert's in a venue like the Hard Rock Live. That must be. It, you know, I, I would think maybe the, so the top five maybe, you know, and I can include us in as the top five, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I, 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 not, not many get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you know, as somebody that, um, was in the audience a lot for these hard rock shows and before I became uh, a staff member. Um, it, it is spectacular and it, it is a full production. And just to sit in that audience and watch it was such a pleasure. And so I'm looking forward to my first hard rock experience, just being, you know, as a staff member and just getting to watch the audience and, and their reaction, because that's the most thrilling part for me is that when we capture their reaction, in a particular moment, it's priceless. Yeah, and uh, who doesn't like uh, Christmas music? And uh, and you put all of these things together and you really create a moment. Uh, more intimate at Sunshine on Friday night, <laughs> over the top spectacular with uh, uh, Soshana uh, Bean. Uh, it's two different it. audiences because you have the people that like that traditional, you know, choral singing and they like that setting of Sunshine Cathedral and what it has to offer. And that's something that we've done since the beginning of our group in 2010. So um, we still have an audience for it. In fact, I think we're just about sold out now for that mm. concert. So yeah, that's also beautiful to say to say, 
we can have a concert on Friday and on Sunday. There is an audience for that. Mm -hmm. Just the magnitude of one, just having that, having a partner like, you know, some hard rock and hard rock live in that venue, just that is something that we as a community and as a board, you know, we don't take that for granted either. Yeah, it's something, uh, frankly, from my seat outside the fishbowl, it's something the entire LGBTQ community in South Florida can be proud of mm -hmm. because we are not, <laughs> and so often we talk about uh, being marginalized. Uh, this is a perfect example and representation of how we are not marginalized. We are leading uh, community, and, and that's what uh, these Christmas concerts for uh, the South Florida Course uh, represents. Um, I, I, want, I cannot not mention Gabe Salazar, uh, the director, the former director, long time, very well-known, nationally well-known director, to come in and fill his shoes. Oh my goodness, how difficult could that have been? Gabe Salazar, we're, we're showing a picture of him right now. He comes in and, and I understand just shortly, um, uh, he's going to have the ultimate honor, Faye what, just one top television personality yeah. in South Florida, and he's going to get in bed with an interview with <laughs> Faye Watt. So, he's looking forward yeah, to it. I, I, I just think it's, it is absolutely fantastic. That wasn't it, something I didn't have to twist his arm with. Yeah, if you want right. to get in bed with Faye, yeah. he was like, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> right. Tell us a little bit about your reaction uh, new to the board about having somebody like Gabe Salazar. I know from my perspective, Gabe has just been wonderful to watch. You know, if you watch him when he's coaching the gentlemen while they're singing or, you know, the way he's up there when he's performing, Gabe, he's been professional. He's taken the chorus to a new level. He's really just been amazing, I think, for mm. the chorus and the community as a whole. Yeah, and anything, is, do you have any good juicy gossip about Gabe? You know, you wanna... <laughs> no, I just, you know, he likes to wear boots like I do. He's from Texas as well. So, you know, we do, we know, we, we know we do have that in common. And I just, I think, you know, kind of much like what Eric said is that, you know, the love that he has for the craft and, and, and the art of it all, is, it's, uh, it's evident. And I think, you know, he's one of those that also, you know, he's connected with all, with all the members of the choir. So, again, it's just very exciting to see just, you know, as phenomenal as the, the choir has been to date, just, you know, as we're going into like season 13 of, of We Sing Gay, you know, having somebody like Gabe is very, very important in this next chapter, next, you know. And diversity uh, representation. Oh, absolutely. And there's so many touch points that. You know, what's so wonderful about Gabe, too, is that, you know, you know, obviously he's professional and he's talented and all that stuff, but he's also a human being. And yeah. I, I get to witness that, you know, when his son comes to visit um, and, you know, how how well he interacts with his uh, his own son. It's just it it just speaks to his character and just as a, as a human being and like, you know, how he teaches, you know, his son you know the correct you know way to speak to people and then mannerism and i'll tell you he's a hoot that kid i i have to say uh, the opportunity um somebody wants to get involved with the course how do they go about doing that so on our website you just go to gmcsf.org and um, you'll go to our audition tab and there is a, a a fill out form where you just fill that at the registration we do have three auditions coming up in December and January. So look on our website for that and um, just fill out the form and then someone on the membership team would reach out to you and get in contact. But there is options if you don't want to sing. If you're not a singer, there is options to volunteer, whether that's helping with the production of a concert, setting up a concert, um, buy a ticket, come support the concert, watch a show. There, there's many options. If you're not a singer, you can still be involved. There's yeah. plenty of opportunities. We are Excellent. always looking for volunteers. Yeah, and always. And, and at the end of the day, uh, we're gay after all. Yeah. Gay <laughs> for us. Uh, we like to socialize. Yes. So, yeah. uh, getting together and making a, a social uh, opportunity is great. Um, last thing uh, that I want to uh, take a moment to discuss is we went through a pandemic. What's exciting about this is, of course, 20 hit us right in the gut. 21, we kind of wobbled back onto our feet, but we haven't had a concert at Hard Rock since 2019. It's returning. Uh, we're excited about the return, but let us not forget that we've gone through two years of dramatic effect of our nonprofit organizations, of which Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida is. Um, how now that the chorus is up and running and, and steaming along now, uh, triumphant return to Hard Rock Live uh, on December 18th, how do we help the chorus? I'm not singing, I'm not volunteering, but here's what I can do for the chorus. What is that? Tell us what we should do. 
I think you should spread the word. You know, it's very easy to find out what's going on with us. Um, we have a calendar of events on our website. Uh, we have a very active social media. So even if you can't attend the concert, you can, you know, share it with your friends. Um, there's uh, donating. Um, we have a donating uh, system, you know, to the organization. Sponsorship. There's plenty of sponsorship opportunities, concerts, getting your brand in front of thousands of people at a concert. And again, for those people that have gone to, you know, the concerts in the past, you know, bring, you know, bring a guest. And I, because I think, like I said, in this, uh, as you've seen, you know, how, you know, with uh, Fred coming and, and, you know, when Fred reached out to me to, to talk to me about the opportunity. Fred. Fred's the president of the board. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Fred, you know, uh, joining joining the board, I think, you know, for me, it was just, it was something that that's spoke to me in, in, because one of the first things again, I, I did ask him was like, talk to me about the voices and who those voices represent. And I think you know, for for me, seeing was believing. So going to the rehearsals, attend, going to the concerts, bringing friends, you know, be, bringing other members of the community, and then that's how you can support is show up. Just whether it be allyship, uh, you know, uh, whether you're part of the LGBTQ uh, community or not, show up. And, and, and be present and, and stay engaged and stay informed. Well, you hear the challenge. Uh, show up and support, uh, support <laughs> our LGBTQ community. We have two great men's uh, and LGBT courses in South Florida, the Miami Gay Men's Course, and you're hearing about this incredible gay men's course of South Florida, one of the largest in the world uh, with this new merger. And you do not want to miss December 16th at Sunshine Cathedral, their Christmas concert, and December 18th for sure, in the Hard Rock Live with Shoshana Bean. Uh, it's going to be an outstanding opportunity, whichever way you would like to experience the holidays with a lot of gay men. It's very exciting. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Edward, uh, Eric, Johnny, for being with us. It helps us understand why our community is important. And uh, the Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida represents that to a T. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for having us. Absolutely. Thank you for being with Queer News tonight. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.